Warning. This show may contain blunders, tangents, and inaccuracies. We try, but words are hard. Spoilers are inevitable. You've been warned. Lastly, the following is the opinion of two middle-aged media junkies. Try not to get butt hurt if we say something you don't like. <clears throat> Viewer discretion is advised. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sequel Centric. We take a look at follow-ups in media and see how they stack up against their predecessors. I'm Duff, and he is the Eddie to my Clark, Nate. How's it going, Duff? Uh, it's uh, it, it's 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 getting even colder, man, by the day. Yeah, that's why I live in SoCal. Yeah, well, you're in SoCal. I'm in Baltimore, so. I don't know what that means, but okay. I'm in Baltimore. I'm in Baltimore, hon. I'm saying well, Bal- I'm saying Baltimore with the New York accent because that's the only accent I really am good at because I'm from New York. Um, my accent is I have no accent because I grew up in San Diego. Yeah, <laughs> closest the closest city to being to Mexico without being in Mexico. Sorry, Baja <laughs> California. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, Duff, but I'm pretty excited to talk about this franchise today. <laughs> Time. It's one of the better Christmas movies that is almost a regular staple in our uh, household, along with Die Hard 1. <laughs> yes, yes, that is indeed a Christmas movie. I don't care what anyone else thinks. It's a Christmas movie. If it's got Santas in the background with lights, it's a Christmas movie. It doesn't, <laughs> does it have to be on Christmas for a Christmas movie as long as it's, I figure if it's in the month of December, it's a Christmas movie, right? Pretty much, man. Like Die Hard 2. Go watch that episode. Yeah, because we did that one. What's on the docket for today, <laughs> Duff? Uh, well, today we're talking about National uh, Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Yes. Yeah, the 1989 movie where the Griswold family plans for a big Christmas, predictably turning into a huge disaster. I like this uh, entry in the franchise because it deviates uh, from the first two. And but it has its own identity, and it, I think it's weaseled its way into you know great yeah. Christmas movies, in my opinion. Because I think you know you watch this, I think we all can relate on some level. Oh uh, sure. Some some Christmases are good, and some kind of a disaster. And some you blow up a cat. Honey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and let's talk about the National Lampoon's uh, franchise for just a second here. Uh, it started off with Animal House, which has nothing to do with the Griswolds. So this is kind of a subset of the National Lampoon's franchise. Uh, we might as well just call it the Griswolds franchise because it's, it, it's its own thing. Well, yeah, it did spin off. Yeah, uh, the Griswolds is um, soon to be a TV show if uh, if the news uh, is is correct. Goldbergs. Uh, the Goldbergs uh, has is technically a spinoff because you've got characters from. Uh, I did not know the Goldbergs was it was under the National Lampoon's uh, flag. Well, yeah, in season seven of The Goldbergs, uh, both Anthony Michael Hall and Christy Brinkley reprised their role. So technically, The Goldbergs is now a spinoff sitcom of The Griswolds. Yeah. Wait, so Michael Anthony Hall and Christy Brinkley reprised the roles from the first vacation movie and they go into The Goldbergs? What the hell is this nut job doing? Hey, go around! I think she's flirting with you, Murray. Whoa, it's just like in the movie. But when you see it in real life, it just comes off as wildly reckless. You're being very aggressive! He's spoken for. Show her your wedding ring. I think she's eyeballing me. Move your melon, Murray, so I can enchant her with a coy wink. This can't be real. Oh, it's real, all right. Yeah. 
Huh. In this article I'm reading here, it says that um, the ABC sitcom The Goldbergs pays tribute to the Griswold family in their arduous cross-country drive to Wally World theme park in its season premiere with an equally star-crossed road trip to Disneyland. Well, that's interesting that they're weaving the Goldbergs into the uh, Nash Lampoon's vacation. Yeah. And there's uh, Christy Brinkley right there in her uh, red Ferrari. Of course. It looks like Mel Brooks in the co-pilot seat. And as you can see on this Twitter post, uh, Anthony Michael Hall did an epic cameo. Nice. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Wow. You guys have been through a whole lot as a family. And you know what? I had no idea there were zebras in Arizona. Zebras are the piranhas of the sand. Well, you know what? All I meant was the park's closed now, but it opens in 15 minutes. <gasps> Why didn't you say something? Well, I tried, but you were going on and on and on. The second time he's reprised a role. I forgot the actress that played... Audrey in the first one reprised her role in A Christmas Vacation 2. Yeah, that was Dana Barron. Yeah, not going to be confused with Dana Barrett. No. <laughs> you never want to confuse them. No. Yeah, so there, there, there's just a huge amount of Griswold movies. There's a huge, an even huger amount uh, of, of uh, National Lampoon's movies, even down to Van Wilder. I cannot Wilder. go home a virgin. I came here to study the great American art of muff diving. <laughs> To smack, clam, munch, rug, dine at just one American pink taco stand. You know, I, I want to do, how is it, park the porpoise, you know? I want to take it through the car wash, baby, you know? And get it waxed, you know? I want to vex it, vex it, you know? And air dry. Not a good one. Sequels, not so much. Well, it was. It, it's a story that was based on one of my favorite comedians, Burt Kreischer, uh, in his life. On the machine! <laughs> So, yeah, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Van Wilder. That and I like uh, Deadpool. I like Ryan, uh, Ryan Reynolds. So, of course. Who doesn't? Uh, mm, Deadpool Hugh Jackman. Too. Sounds like uh, we should do an episode about that. It does indeed, Nate. It does indeed. <laughs> Nate, why don't you start us off? What uh, pros and cons do you have for this episode? You know, there's so many pros. Very few cons in my book. Just, I mean, if you love... The Clark Griswold character, you should, uh, and you like the two previous ones, you should love this one as well. I mean, it's just, he's a lovable goof. You know, he tries so hard, but just things happen, and, you know. For his being as old as the character portrayed by Chevy Chase is, uh, I really, I don't know, he's kind of childish and naive with his decisions. Like, let's talk about the secondary plot of the swimming pool. I'm sorry, swimming pools are expensive, uh, even more so now than in 89. You, you can't be going and just putting $7,500 deposits on something that isn't a guarantee. And that's what Clark did, bought uh, a swimming pool. He didn't well, get anything for a bonus. My opinion, this is the equivalent of him dreaming big for Wally World for his family. That was the goal, right? Yeah. In the first movie, Wally World. So in this movie... It's all about being the family the man. The price isn't quite as big, but it's that's that's what he's focusing on, right? Yeah, he's trying to get the whole family together and have an old-fashioned Christmas. And yeah, yeah. for a family man myself, I have to say, uh, that's, that's, a, 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 that's a huge goal for most people. Oh, yeah. Not mine. I just go to the river. You can pee in the river and you can't pee in your pool without consequences. Well, yeah, but were you in a van by the river? No, no. Okay. Tent, no tent, right by the river. On Christmas? Not on Christmas. Well, that's summertime. kind of what we're talking about, dude. Fine, fine, fine. You know, it's like six, seven months difference. True. Have you ever gone cam camping in November? It gets a little chilly. Not Baltimore chilly. <laughs> no, I, I, I would go camping in November if I lived in, I don't know, Arizona or True. SoCal. Another uh, fun pro is uh, they slipped in another good-looking lady for Clark to Google over. Oh, and it's funny that yes. At the, at the uh, department store, which I find hilarious because they put her in a, in a red dress, which I'm guessing is... The it's substitute symbolic, for yeah. the red Ferrari, you know, and vacation and even um, Vegas vacation, which is another episode. Yeah, Sparky really has a way with the ladies. Which is to say Christmas has a new 
Yule log. Not a log. I don't have a log, but I mean, you know, just if I had a log, not in the sense that you think I said I did. <laughs> oh, good golly. Tis the season to be merry. Well, that's my name. Oh, shit. Uh, him st stumbling, and it was pretty hilarious. And then, you know, Rusty just comes up, and he just kind of looks decided. Oh, hey, right? It's just like he's, he's on his this, this harmless flirting, and then his son just catches him, and he's, oh, hey, hey, Russ. <laughs> got, like a kid caught with his hand in the cookie jar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's got a way of getting caught with his, uh, it, well, kind of like being caught with your pants down almost. And, and uh, Clark Griswold really has a, a knack at that type of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, plus this movie's got some people you'll recognize. John, a very young Johnny Galecki, which rolled into, you know, the first Roseanne TV show. And then. And now one of the biggest sitcoms in the world, Big Bang Theory. Yeah, Big Bang Theory. Yeah. You've got Beverly D'Angelo. You've got Doris Roberts before Raymond. Yeah. What's her face from Seinfeld? Julia Louis. Louis Julia, Julia Louis Drivers. Yeah. And then um, Juliet Lewis from Natural Born Killers. No, yep. but uh, Don, I wrote that uh, down. No, what was that one? Uh, Dust Till Dawn. The Dust Till Dawn. Another great movie with her in it. Richie, would you do me a favor and <laughs> for me, please? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of Juliette Lewis. Uh, and, and that's, uh, you know, th th that's something that I had written down. Uh, fun fact, Juliette Lewis and Julia Louis-Dreyfus, uh, spelt very similar, both in the movie. Doesn't mean anything. Yeah. No, it's, it's like, nice it's to like see a diehard, too. There's some faces that you recognize before they, before they kind of got slung into bigger movies. Mm. Another great part of this movie, next to the, my opinion, the blot, bobsledding scene is Clark's rant on his boss. One of the all-time <laughs> great rants in yeah. cinematic history, in my opinion. And I want to look him straight in the eye, and I want to tell him what a cheap, lying, no-good, rotten, four-flushing, low-life, snake-licking, dirt-eating, inbred, overstuffed, ignorant, blood-sucking, dog-kissing, brainless, dickless, hopeless, heartless, fat-ass, bug-eyed, stiff-legged, spotty-lipped, worm-headed sack of monkey shit he is! Hallelujah! Holy shit! Where's the Tylenol? It's just, it's classic. It's, it's just classic. It, it, it captures all of us and our frustration towards our bosses, and it nails it perfectly. Yeah, ag super agree on that sentiment, Nate. Uh, it was a, a classic rant by Chevy Chase. Oh, yeah. SNL alumni. alumni. Mm hmm. Now, I have a couple of things. Uh, me being a details guy, I, I, I'm Shocker. irked. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> uh, there are a few things that kind of irk me about this movie, uh, and, and that's the, some of the subplot routines. Like, for example, uh, Clark gets stuck up in the attic trying to stow some gifts away, and uh, you know the, 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 the rest of the family goes out shopping, and he gets stuck in the attic until they get home. Uh, he's standing right there on the plaster, and he falls through and hits a bunk bed. There was plenty of room for him to like slither down into the bunk bed getting out of the attic and not having to sit there and put on all these old moth hold clothes yeah. uh that are just uh hanging out in the attic and and oh let's let you know let's watch some uh reel to reel tapes while we're up there uh would, and relive the reminiscence but it was an unnecessary subroutine would you classify that as chevy chase dressing in drag <laughs> Quite possibly, Nate. Quite possibly. Well, you know, he had everything but the wig and the dress, but... You know. yeah. He had some very marvelous gloves on, too. Perfect shade of... Yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm with you. I, it just, it, it's so a little unbelievable. If you, if you put the reality factor in it, everybody's going, it's like, hey, where's Clark? Where's Clark? You know. Is he in the house? Um, I don't know. Even, it's just, you know, even the, even the mother-in-law, I mean... I think most people, before they would close it, might say, anybody up there? Yeah. But once again, it's a movie, and you got to have these things happen to Clark Wiswell. I mean, that's what makes part of the movie. He stumbles, he fumbles, he gets up, dusts himself off, goes yeah. along. No and blood, then, nothing. Yeah, yeah. And the next thing. It, it's, a, it's a little unrealistic, especially, like I said, he falls through the plaster, and he could have easily slipped on down there. 
Yeah. You know, and been in or, the house. You know, or when he's he's sledding on the, you know, stainless steel bowl that's been greased oh. up. <laughs> that's my opinion. That's like the biggest pro and funniest moment. It really was. In the whole thing. But he very, I mean, just, you know, the reality factor dictates that all he had to do was tilt himself backwards and he would have just fallen off the thing and been fine. But th- th- where is the comedy in that, I ask? So that is correct. Yeah, yeah It's a passable faux pas. He's like the modern, like the 80s version of like the Three Stooges or uh, Abbott and Costello, yeah. uh, uh, Laurel and Hardy, slapstick humor, right? And, and if you, if you, if he, t- t- most people, they probably would have tilt back and hit the snow, be okay. But the sheer fact that it, it he just, he takes a lot off like a gun, just pew, yeah. and then gets down to the, weaving through the trees, like in a James Bond movie. I think For Your Eyes Only is the one I'm thinking of. And uh, and then goes right across the street with the, the sparks flying out the back <laughs> and goes right into a Walmart. It's just classic Griswold. Uh, yeah. And I love the callback later on in the movie with cousin Eddie, Randy Quaid, uh, oh, yeah. who's who's picking up the, the you know the burnt out shell of a bowl, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's got like this big burn mark, and it's just it, there's nothing left of it. It's just yeah, a, yeah. A, a it's just a border at this point. I love the uh, speaking of cousin Eddie. I loved that he reprised his role. Uh, wasn't invited, just didn't care. Showed up anyway. No, no, yeah. All the- <sighs> it would enhances your holiday spirit, <laughs> dear Catherine. Eddie. <laughs> oh, the house is gorgeous, Clark. Eddie? <laughs> I hope you didn't do this all on our account, Clark. <laughs> I'm so glad um, he's back in this one because I really missed him, uh, you know, in European Vacation because he, even though his role was kind of small in the first one, it really made it. And his role was a little bigger in this one. And it just, like I said, he just shows up unannounced and... um it just, yeah. And then instead of, so now you got two stooges instead of one stooge. So it's. Yeah. And, and speaking of uh, last on Randy, uh, I, I love that he also reprised his role uh, in, in Independence Day. Uh, and, you know, he, he, he went out like a hero, not like yeah, the, he, the alcoholic. He does he have that kind of. Yeah. If you think about it, I, I didn't think about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. An ID4. All right, you alien assholes. In the words of my generation, up yours! <laughs> oh, boys! I'm back! He, he's driving an RV, like in this one. He's, yeah. he almost, he's almost kind of playing the same character, but just, I think, a little... I think his IQ points are up just a bit. A little bit. I mean, he, he knows how to fly. Yeah, That's yeah. The only but difference. still, yeah, yeah. He's he, still a very, redneck. He's still, you know, whatever. I mean, it, it, it was, it, it's a great character if you can pull it off. And, and Randy Quaid definitely pulled it off. Oh, yeah, definitely. Not so much in Christmas Vacation 2. I haven't even seen that. Is it good? Ed, that's another episode. <laughs> that's another episode, Duff. What else can, what else can we say? Can you think of any, uh, any cons about this movie? It just it's a like I said uh in previous I mean, episodes. For me it's it's a good feel movie. Yeah, it's a really good feel movie and it, the 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 only cons can be negated just from alternate storylines. You know, you've 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 got the 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 sledding scene. You've got the sewage scene. You've got so many <laughs> scenes that are, you know, technically not necessary but add value to the movie. So, no, nah, this is except for Rusty and Audrey changing but I, I think the only thing that really took me out of the feel of the magic is is the character changes and, you know, Rusty no longer being a, a ginger. Well, I mean, at this point with the third one in the franchise, they've pretty much established, you know, like the kids are going to be different, you know. Yeah. Uh, when they were filming European Vacation, they, want, they wanted the same um, two actors to play the kids, but uh, Michael Anthony Hall was already uh, He was doing signed weird up. science. Weird science. Yeah. So they went with the other redhead and um, Dana. Barron? Oh, Dana Barron. Dana Barron. Yeah. Dan Barron was signed up or wanted to reprise her role, but at that point, the producers decided, like, well, we'll just kick you to the side and bring in a different actress. So the only thing, the only thing that makes my eye twitch in this one is that the that 
Audrey seems to be the older sibling in this one and not the younger one. Younger one, That's yeah. about probably my only con. I'm okay with the kids being different. At one, at, by, by the time you watch all four of them, that's probably, that's the running gag. And even Clark says it in Vegas Vacation. I barely I, recognize you yeah, kids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So that becomes, but it was it was an accidental flu paw, and they just kind of ran with it, you know. They made it work, and so I yeah, I, yeah. I don't call that a con at all. I, I think this movie's filled with pros, and um, you know that's 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 what I, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Well, Duff, big question of the day: Does it sequel? Oh, in my book, for sure it does. Uh, I mean, come on. It, it, it. What other movie has had this many spinoffs? Of course it sequels. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, it does sequel for me. And like the Purge franchise, you don't, for the most part, you don't need to watch them in a row. You can watch them in any order. I mean, if, if you start with the Christmas Vacation... And you you want to jump to the first one or the fourth one? It you know you can watch it in any order. I still haven't seen European Vacation, so I'm missing really? out on European. I have seen Vacation, and I've seen Euro Trip, but I haven't seen European Vacation. See, I've seen the only one I haven't seen is the 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 2015 one with is it 2015 2016 with Ed Helms. Uh, yeah, that was the Vacation movie. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the final one in the chapter. But I've seen the other four. I have a, a Christmas Vacation on Blu-ray, which they have uh, audio commentary. I kind of like that stuff on, yeah. on, on the Blu-rays with audio commentary. They have Beverly D'Angelo, Johnny Galecki, Randy Quaid, and Juliet Lewis, Lewis on yeah. there. I feel like that sort of thing. That's why I kind of like physical media over, you know, digital or streaming because oh. they. Yeah, I'll little... take I'll take physical over digital any day just because of the content that you don't get with yeah, most yeah. of the digital packages. Yeah. Uh, all of the documentary stuff, the featurette stuff, the the, yeah. the 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 behind the scenes, the commentary, the blooper reels. Yeah, yeah. It's so worthy of getting physical media in 2020 just because of that alone. If yeah. you're a media nerd like we are. Well, you know, the the bonus of having a digital or streaming, you can jump in you know, from vacation to European, blah, blah. You don't have to get up or whatever, you know, unless you want to get a drink or, or you know. Yeah. Relieve your relieve your bladder. But still, um, I, yeah, I just, maybe it's because of my age. I just love physical media, especially if the internet's down. You can just, boop, yeah. pop it in. You're and hey, hey, I'll use this time as a plausible reason to mention the fact that you can become a patron and you can, See all the behind-the-scenes stuff that makes sequel-centric work, as well as exclusive content and blooper reels. <laughs> so head over to patreon.com slash sequel-centric and check us out. Well, I think we should give this movie our rating. Well, I, why, why have my own thoughts? You already uh, said that you bought it. <laughs> true, true. Uh, yeah, spoiler alert. <laughs> I, ruined, I ruined my own thing. Yeah, yeah de definitely for me for buy it. I would. It's in. It's in our collection of holiday movies, like you know Rudolph and Frosty, and you know A Christmas Story. And yeah, if uh, you Christmas celebrate Christmas, too. if you like the holiday season, definitely yeah. buy it. It's worthy to be in anyone's Christmas collection, physical or digital. Mainly physical. Mainly physical. Let's get, main, let's get. Let's get. <laughs> physical. All right, Olivia. Let's get physical media. Let's get media. Media. <laughs> so, Nate, what's coming up next time on Sequel Centric? A Christmas Story 2. That is going to be quite the episode. Does it sequel? <laughs> I'm uh, sure everybody has their opinion about it. Spoiler alert. Check back on the next episode. Lord knows we do. Uh, we were forced to. That's all I'll say about that one, my friend. <laughs> well, you weren't held at gunpoint. <laughs> no, I was held at Nate point. Just at content point. <laughs> <laughs> for better or for worse. It's worse. content, and, you know, we got to give what the people want. They want more of this delicious show. 
Yeah. Delicious? Is that the brand? <laughs> delicious? Hey, it works. All right. So for all our centrics out there that are interested in the next episode, uh, don't bother watching it if you haven't already seen it. We'll catch you up. It's not that hard. As long as you've seen the original movie, A Christmas Story, you're good. So I don't think there's much more to talk about. If you guys have any comments, be sure to leave them below. Uh, if you're listening to the podcast, go ahead and email show at sequelcentric.com. Well, before we hit the dirt, is there anything else you would like to say to everybody? Doug? Yeah, I, I like snot. And I, I don't mean like booger mucus. No, I'm talking about the Rottweiler in uh, the movie. Uh, as far as Rotties go, this is one of the first times I've actually seen a a genuine representation of the Rottweiler breed. Uh, played, you know, played perfectly with the goofiness of snot. And this here's our pride and joy, snots. <laughs> Pretty name, Ed. <laughs> yeah, we named him that because he's got this sinus condition. <laughs> snot! You roll over and let Uncle Clark scratch your belly. Yeah, I kind of like snot a little bit more over than dinky. But then again, snot did get tied to a bumper. <laughs> and snot does reprise his role in A Christmas Vacation 2, Cousin Eddie's Paradise. And that is a different episode. Yes, it is. All right, that's it for today, folks. I'm Duff. I'm Nathan. And until next time, ask yourself this question. Does, Does it, it sequel? sequel? Thanks for watching Sequel Centric. Smack one of them thumbs if you made it through the episode. Click here to subscribe and ring our bell for notifications. And click here to watch another one. You know you want to. Don't do it.